everyone, and thank you so much for joining us this morning. Uh, we have some important uh, news to share. I want to thank uh, Council President Hardin, Commissioner uh, Brown, Commission President O'Grady. I believe Commissioner Boyce will be joining us as well, as well as our health commissioners, Dr. Mashika Roberts and Joe Mazzola. Uh, but want to uh, start our uh, press event here this morning with this video. Our community has a great team working to protect your health during COVID-19. Together, we are doing everything we can, but we need your help to protect yourself and others. Wear a mask and make sure it covers your nose. Stay at least six feet apart from others. Please wash your hands. Avoid gathering with people outside your household. And stay home if you are sick. Help us beat COVID-19 so we can all thrive together. Thrive Together is sponsored by Columbus Public Health. I'd like to uh, thank each and every one of you for joining us here this morning and all of your incredible partnership uh, collaboration getting us to this point. I also would like to thank each of our hospital chief medical officers who help with the PSA uh, that you just watched and all of our healthcare providers across our community who work on the front lines taking care of us and fighting this pandemic every day putting the needs of others before their own. Thank you doesn't seem like enough, but please know how grateful we are for your service and your sacrifice on behalf of our community. I'm not gonna mince words. We have entered a dangerous time in our fight against COVID-19. This surge is much scarier than what we saw in the spring or even again this summer. For the first time, our hospitals are near capacity and the number of cases and hospital admissions are showing no signs of slowing. In a few moments, Columbus Public Health Commissioner, Dr. Mashika Roberts and Franklin County Health Commissioner, Joe Mazzola will give you the stark numbers. They will also announce a health advisory that they will be signing shortly that will go into effect on Friday. I wanna take a moment to lay out what we can do right now to spare our healthcare workers from being overwhelmed, to protect the lives of our friends and families and keep our economy open. First, we can stay home. Yesterday, Governor DeWine announced a curfew from 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. starting on Thursday, but we can and in fact, we must do more. We need to go back to what we practiced when the virus first entered our community. We need to consolidate our trips, one trip to the grocery store per week, visit the grocery store during off times. Saturdays are historically the busiest with Sundays not far behind. Try to go on a weekday morning if possible. Shop for our neighbors who are more likely to contract and develop complications from COVID. Work from home if you're able. Those who can, must, because some like nurses and EMTs and grocery store clerks cannot. We owe it to them to stay home if we can. And ask yourself if you need to go out or you just want to. Second, do not have gatherings at your home and do not attend them at other homes. Keep your contact to your immediate household as much as possible. And yes, that means for Thanksgiving and for the holidays that we all love and celebrate in the weeks to come. For the first time in years, I will not see my father, my sister, or my brother on Thanksgiving. My wife won't see her parents and our daughter will not see her grandparents, aunts, uncles, and cousins. I know it's a difficult decision I know it breaks traditions, but I know that right now, we all need something to look forward to. Do it anyway. We know what the right thing to do is, and we have to lead for the health and well-being of our community. Third, wear a mask. 
if you have to be out, and even if you don't believe in it, it's a small thing that can make a big difference. And finally, wash your hands. Wash them thoroughly and vigorously and often. As Governor DeWine said yesterday, there is a light at the end of the tunnel with the vaccines being developed. But we must build a bridge to that time, and we are not there yet. Every one of us has a role to play in stopping the spread of the virus. Now, you are not immune. Your family is not immune. Your neighborhood is not immune. We can do this. We've done it before, but it will take commitment from everyone. Neighbors, this is not the time to panic. It is time for us to lead. Now I want to introduce uh, Council President Shannon Hart. Thank you, Mayor, uh, and thank you to commissioners, uh, to our health care professionals and leaders who are with us this morning. I'm here on, this morning on behalf of my colleagues on City Council and our health chair, Council Member Tyson. You know, Mayor, every single council meeting, I read out the number of our neighbors who have died uh, because of COVID. We're close to 500 residents just in Columbus that have passed. That's not even including our neighbors in the suburbs. And while that's a big number, it can grow exponentially. It can go a lot higher very fast. While we're, we are all interested in the graphs and the statistics that tell the story, at the end of the day, this is personal. The virus is raging among our friends, our families, our schools, our churches, our neighborhoods. If you don't know someone who is infected, you will soon. We must stay home. Friends with pre-existing conditions call me. They say they're afraid to run errands. You know, this is about my family and it's about your family. I'm worried who will, will hear a sick next, who has to go to the hospital and be hooked up to oxygen or a ventilator. This is not political. It's not something affecting others. It is in our families. We must stay home. This can be slowed and lives can be saved, but we need to step up and just stay home. Let's be clear, we all know this. It sucks, 2020 sucks, but it's our reality. Thanksgiving is my favorite holiday. And I have to be honest, earlier this year, I was feeling kind of hopeful that I'd be able to pull off a little dinner that resembled normal years. I bought these, um, I think, cool Thanksgiving napkin rings. Um, I'm packing them up now. This year's celebrations have to be different. Columbus, this is not a drill. Or the, uh, we need to chill out and look out for one another. We need to stop the spread now or the hospitals will not be able to handle the flood of patients. As the mayor and as the governor said, we are close to the end of this thing. Vaccines are coming, but we've all sacrificed too much to lose the game in the fourth quarter. And let's be clear what the game is. Our grandmothers, our uncles with pre-existing uh, pre conditions, our healthcare workers who are sacrificing, who have been sacrificing so much for so long. That's the game. City Council will work with Dr. Roberts and the health department and the administration to consider more actions beyond what is announced today if we deem it is necessary to keep our family, our family safe. So please stay home, Columbus. With that, I'll turn things over to my friend, Franklin County Commission President, John O'Grady. Council President, thank you, thank you, Mayor Ginther, County Commissioners Brown and Boyce. Uh, appreciate everybody being here today. Uh, I'm John O'Grady, Franklin County Commissioner. Uh, and in this Thanksgiving season, I'd like to start with a few positive things first. Uh, we're very fortunate to have strong leadership like this in our community uh, to be able to address these issues. We're fortunate to have great hospital systems here in central Ohio. And certainly we're very fortunate to have some of the resources that we can devote uh, to fighting this pandemic and supporting our residents. With all that being said, we're also in the fight of our lives. More Ohioans have died of COVID-19 than died in the Korean and Vietnam wars put together. But too many of us still aren't taking this pandemic seriously enough 
And frankly, I think some of the messaging that you've been getting from our leaders has been a little bit confusing to say the least, which is why it's so important for us to be here today speaking with one voice about how serious this is and what has to be done about it. Here in Franklin County, we continue to lead the state in COVID cases. More than 43,000 cases to date, more than 650 of our residents here in Franklin County have died. The number of new cases is now more than twice what it was a month ago. Most cases continue to be in the 18 to 40 year old demographic, which is particularly distressing to me since I have children, nieces and nephews, many nieces and nephews in that age range. Statewide, we had 1,033 new cases on September 16th, 2,140 new cases on October 16th, and then on November 16th, 7,268 new cases. That means that not only are the numbers going up, but they're going up at a faster and faster rate. If that trend continues, we'll have more than 17,000 new cases on December 16th, and that's obviously not sustainable. So make no mistake, we are under attack by this pandemic and this virus, but we're not helpless. When we've been attacked in the past, Americans have always come together to meet the challenge, and it's time for us to do that again. The science is clear that there are things that we can do to slow the spread. We did it very successfully in the spring, and we need to now do it again. Wear your mask, wash your hands, and avoid gatherings. Yes, this means Thanksgiving too. I'm from a very, very large family. Thanksgiving for my family, just like yours, is a traditional thing. It is very, very important to all of us but we have to sacrifice one Thanksgiving to be able to get to the next. Stay home, unless you need to go out for work, for school, or for other essential needs, stay home. In recent days, Governor DeWine has strengthened his public health orders, his mask mandate, and he's just yesterday issued a curfew. He's done this not only to save lives, but to save livelihoods. If we, if we can't get these things under control, it will mean more widespread shutdowns in the future. Our actions today are complementary to the governor's order. Not only can we help to protect our neighbors, but we can also protect the small businesses that make our neighborhoods unique and provide the services and jobs that all of us need. We're asking you to not only stay in after 10, but also to stay home whenever you possibly can. It literally may be a matter of life and death. Thank you again, everyone. Visit our county website, Spread Love Not COVID, for more information. Thank you. Next, I'd uh, uh, invite uh, Columbus Public Health Commissioner, uh, Dr. Mashika Roberts, to share uh, some information. Dr. Roberts? Thank you, Mayor, and thank you all. Columbus and Franklin County are experiencing a rapid increase in COVID-19 cases. You've heard some of the statistics, but let me share a few more. On October 1, here in Franklin County, we reported 143 COVID cases. That was our seven day average on October 1. Fast forward to November 15th, and our seven day average has jumped to 742 cases. The number of hospitalizations in our region, as well as right here in our county, is at an all-time high of individuals with COVID-19. We've never experienced this many patients with COVID-19 in our hospitals since the pandemic started. And our community positivity rate has continued to increase. As of September 20th, or the week of September 20th, our community positivity rate was 3.7. If we fast forward to our last week's positivity rate, it had jumped to 12.5%. As you've heard, and I want to reiterate, we are at a critical point in our fight against COVID-19. We must act now to reduce the number of cases and impact our hospital systems. 
While it is more important than ever to follow the state guidance, including the governor's new curfew announced yesterday, we must do more now to slow the spread of COVID-19 here in Franklin County. That is why beginning Friday, November 20th at 6 p.m., Columbus Public Health and Franklin County Public Health are advising all residents of Columbus and Franklin County to stay at home due to the rapid increase in COVID-19 cases and hospitalizations in our city and county. Residents are advised to only leave home to go to work or school or for essential needs, such as seeking medical care, going to the grocery store or pharmacy, and picking up food. We are also strongly advising all residents not to have any guests in their homes unless they are essential workers, including the Thanksgiving holiday, as well as to avoid travel in and out of the state. This advisory will remain in place for two consecutive incubation periods or 28 days, unless we determine a change in this guidance is needed sooner than that. This stay at home advisory complements all the state orders that are currently in place, including the new curfew. It does not replace them. Additionally, we urge residents to limit meetings and social events to 10 individuals or less whether indoors or outdoors, at homes, event venues, or other similar spaces. While weddings and funerals are exempt from the current state orders, this advisory strongly discourages those gatherings as well. All higher education institutions, our local school districts and daycares are advised to maintain their current learning modalities but we strongly advise all extracurricular activities to be discontinued immediately. Furthermore, we advise all residents who can work from home or do so to the maximum extent possible. And for businesses to transition as many transactions as possible and functions to online. We understand that these are very difficult times. You've heard others say 2020 has been a challenging year, but we're asking you to step up and do the right thing now to help slow the spread of COVID-19 here in our community. What happens over the next few weeks is very critical. We need your help and we need your help now. These actions will help us flatten the curve and get our cases back under control. So I'm asking all of you to join me, to join us in staying home and saving lives. Commissioner Mazzola. Thank you, Dr. Roberts. It's great to be with you and thank you to our elected officials uh, for convening and uh, partnering with us on this advisory. We certainly appreciate the ongoing collaboration between the city and the county. As was mentioned, I mean, right now we are facing a very difficult scenario for our community. The exponential growth of the cases that we're seeing is jeopardizing our ability uh, for our employers and our schools and our hospitals to operate. Our local business community, um, our nonprofits, they're being severely impacted and we simply just cannot look the other way and we have to take action now. So Dr. Roberts talked about some of the, the um, specifics in the advisory, but I do wanna just build on a few of, of, of Dr. Roberts' remarks. We're asking all of our residents to stay home as much as possible. We're asking them to avoid any unnecessary contact with those outside of their household. Work from home as much as possible and do things like curbside pickup for essentials, takeout instead of going inside of a restaurant, support our businesses by buying online, and for those who are able, keep your nonprofit memberships during this time because they too will need our support uh, during the next couple of weeks as we're not able to, per to go there in person. And of course, as was mentioned, if you do need to leave your home, wear a mask, watch your distance and wash your hands. We're asking our residents to take these steps for those that we're trying to protect as was mentioned, our family, our friends, our neighbors, the frontline and critical infrastructure workers who are so essential to keep our community moving forward. Our public health departments are working tirelessly to keep up with the rising cases in terms of contact tracing. 
but it has become increasingly difficult. So we're asking our residents to help us by doing their own contact tracing if they can. Talk to, their, uh, to those who they may have been in contact with if you are positive and if you think that you've been exposed to the virus, self-quarantine right away. We're gonna be posting more information about that on our website so that individuals can take proactive measures if they are positive or if they believe that they may have come into contact with someone who is. I also wanna close by saying that this is not permanent. This is, this is not something that will be with us forever. We talked about that the vaccine is coming. It will be here soon, but we need more time to slow the spread of this virus in our community. The conditions in our community right now, I would characterize are, is, is, is a fragile state. We need to make sure that we continue to do everything we can. So we're asking everyone to sacrifice a little bit now for our neighbors, for our family members, and quite frankly, for those that you'll never meet so that we can continue to get back to normal once we do have our, the vaccine here in our community. As was mentioned, as we all know, Thanksgiving is next week and the holidays uh, will be here soon. And it's a time for gratitude and appreciation. So during the next month, let's go about our lives with the most cautious of fashions to express that gratitude and appreciation. Let's sacrifice a little now for this season so that our future seasons can be even better. And so with that, it's um, my pleasure to turn the call over to Commissioner, County Commissioner Kevin Boyce. Commissioner. Thank you, Commissioner Mazzola. Can you hear me okay? Great, yeah. thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Mazzola, uh, Dr. Roberts, my colleagues, uh, Commissioner O'Grady and Commissioner Brown. I see President Hardin and, and, and certainly Mayor Ginther. Um, uh, I'm Kevin Boyce, County Commissioner, and uh, I'm probably in day three of post my post quarantine quote post um, COVID-19 positive um, um, designation. And I want to just tell you about my experience a little bit. You know, I pride myself on washing my hands and using hand sanitizer every day. I kept myself socially distanced and had a mask on everywhere I went. Yet I started to feel like, uh, like in typical change of season, my allergies was kicking in. And I felt confident that I had not been exposed and that I had not done anything that would compromise my health or someone else's health. But the symptoms grew much worse every day. My fever shot up. I was carrying uh, over 102 fever that I could not break for several days. Um, and then I started to have a lot of trouble breathing. Now, for those who don't know me outside of politics, you should know that I've probably run no less than 15 marathons in the last few years. I pride myself on taking care of myself and keeping myself together every day. While I don't think I'm the picture of health, uh, I think I work pretty hard at it and do pretty okay with it. My temperature started to go up over a couple of days and before I know it, I found myself in a hospital bed in a hospital here in Columbus. I was alone, I was scared, and I could not breathe. And I will tell you, I thought every day, what did I do to expose myself to COVID-19? How, what did I do? How, where did I slip up? And you know, my doctor told me it could have been anything. Just being out and about, you subject yourself, you can touch a doorknob and then rub your eye. You can, you know, um, get a droplet and you know in one minute of moving your mask or you know it, there are all kinds of ways even that a diligent person could be exposed and the reason why i wanted to come on and share this with you is because i wasn't sure if i was going to make it and i can tell you i feel like i'm in pretty good shape and so for those of you who don't think that this is real or think that this is serious, I got news for you. Um, and I will tell you, <clears throat> I'm very grateful for uh, the calls and uh, so many people who checked on me every day, uh, but it's terrifying. And, you know, when you're in a hospital, you're isolated because they don't want to expose anyone else to it. At one point, when I first was admitted, the doctor wouldn't even come in to the room. 
the doctor wouldn't even come in because he said you're you're highly contagious and you've been you you have it he said so we're going to test you real quick for rapid tests just because there there was a thought that maybe you had the other type of pneumonia and that could be treated with antibiotics or whatnot and so they just wanted to be sure um but the point being is that you know a little effort and a little bit of stress can protect you from a lot of stress and a lot of other type of effort and so i just want to speak to central ohio and to say let's work together to protect each other you know i went through my contact tracing and i was absolutely even more terrified at the people that i could have infected and that i could have impacted their lives you know i don't want to talk about others um, health conditions but i i called my friend commissioner o'grady because we had spent time uh, during the last few election days together and i know he's had some challenges over the years and i said I got, he's got to be one of the first people I call. And it was a tough call that I had to make to my friend and colleague, but he appreciated and immediately called his doctor. And the point is that I think about it and perhaps I should have never even gone out and campaigned on those last few days before the election. And so, again, I just want to say to those folks who, if you got loved ones and people you care about and that care about you, then you'll mask up and you'll stay home and you'll work to protect all of us because I'd like to see you on the other side of this. I'd like to see Central Ohio be stronger and better in 2021 on the other side of this. I'm healing now and, you know, I probably lost, you know, I don't know, 10 or 12 pounds. Um, and I've been, been at home and it's been I'm by myself, <laughs> you know, but I know I'm keeping others safe, keeping myself safe. And um, I know we all wanna be around people for the holiday, but I, I wanna just warn you and encourage you, if you really love your loved ones around the holiday, then you'll stay at home. Thank you. Commissioner, uh, thank you uh, for the, the courage and willingness to share your story powerful story, a uh, real life example of the seriousness of this disease, even amongst um, our healthiest neighbors, uh, the seriousness of, of this virus and this disease. Uh, thank you, Commissioner, for sharing that. Thanks again to Council President Hardin, uh, Commission President O'Grady, Dr. Roberts, Joe Mazzola, uh, Commissioner Marilyn Brown, who's joined us and her strong support. We are all in full support of this advisory. Other cities and counties across the state are putting together similar advisories and even orders. We're committed to giving our communities throughout the state the opportunity to change the track we're on. What does advisory mean? Well, we think of it like a weather advisory that is issued in the winter months when there is a storm. A winter weather advisory informs you that winter weather conditions are expected to cause significant inconveniences that may be hazardous and potentially a risk to your health and safety. That is where we are now. We are in the storm. These are significant inconveniences that may be hazardous. The storm won't last forever, but what we do in the days and weeks to come will determine how long this storm of COVID-19 will last in Columbus in Franklin County. Our collective adherence to this guidance can literally save lives. We can do this. We've done it before, and we know we have the resolve, the resources, and resilience to do it again. It's not the time to panic. It's time to lead. We are the largest community in the state. And by looking out for one another and following this advisory, we can lead the state out of some of our darkest days. We are very fortunate to have uh, the chief medical officers and leaders from each of the health systems with us. Uh, Dr. Joe Gustado from Ohio Health, Dr. Nick Creasulis from Mount Carmel Health, 
Dr. Rustin Morse from Nationwide Children's Hospital, Dr. Andy Thomas from OSU Wexner Medical Center. Uh, I do, I know that both commissioners touched a little bit on the capacity of our health systems, but I was wondering if I could ask Dr. Thomas, I just, I think it's so important to uh, reinforce where our health systems are and the potential risk to our neighbors if we do not flatten this curve and slow this spread at this time. Dr. Thomas, would you mind just sharing a few comments from the health system's perspective on capacity and challenges and, and the dire situation we're in? Thank you, Mayor Ginther. Can you hear me okay? Great. <clears throat> I apologize, there's some construction going on in my office today, so there might be a little bit of background noise. Um, but uh, I think your, your points are well made, and I appreciate uh, the, your office and the county commissioner's office having this uh, uh, event today, making this announcement. I'm here in Franklin County um, in our three adult health systems. Over the past 14 days, we've seen an 82% increase in the number of COVID patients that are in our hospitals. That's just over the past two weeks. And we know well that it, people do not tend to be admitted to the hospital on the first day that they get symptoms. It tends to be seven to 14 days after the symptoms or after diagnosis. So until we see a, a decline in cases per day that really is last for seven to 10 to 14 days, we know that our hospitalizations are gonna to continue to rise. Plus it's also incredibly important to remember that in Franklin County, we serve uh, from a referral perspective, uh, uh, 36 counties uh, in Central Ohio, Southern Ohio and Southeastern Ohio, that hospitals and communities that are relying on us here to make sure that we have the capacity in place to manage the patients that are too sick to stay in those community or regional hospitals. Uh, they're doing their part they're keeping as many patients locally as possible, but it's important for you to realize that for zone two, like I said, 36 counties across uh, 40 plus hospitals and health systems, it was just on Monday, November 2nd that we surpassed 400 patients in the hospital in the zone. To think back in the spring, we peaked at 356, so we crossed 400 on November 2nd. That was a Monday. On Friday, November 6th, we surpassed 500 patients in the hospital just four days later. On Tuesday, November 10th, just four days after that, we surpassed 600 patients in the hospital. Yesterday, we surpassed 700 patients in the hospital just seven days after passing 600. And today, we surpassed 800 patients in zone two hospitals across the state, while just for surpassing 700 yesterday. So it is a major public health crisis that's now affecting those people even that don't have COVID because what you're going to see in the coming days to weeks this hospital is not being able to manage the capacity and they're going to have to stop doing and postponing non-urgent elective cases, surgeries and procedures in order to free up both bed capacity and staff to manage the rise in COVID positive patients that we're seeing in our hospitals. And this is not just in Columbus, this is across 36 counties of the state. And I'll tell you zone one in Northern Ohio and zone three in Southern Ohio are as bad, if not worse, than what we're seeing here in zone two. So we cannot sound the alarm bell loud enough. People need to change their behaviors. People need to, all the things that you're, Mayor, Mr. Mayor, that uh, Mayor Ginta, that you are recommending are the exact same things that the health leaders have been talking about now for weeks that people need to focus on. So thank you for the chance to comment. I, 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 on behalf of all my colleagues and, and frankly, all the frontline healthcare workers tens of thousands in our community that are putting their life on the line every day coming into care for members of our community. Thank you. Uh, and thank you for our ability to participate today. Thank you, uh, Dr. Thomas. Uh, I just thought it was really important for the public and for uh, the press to have uh, that information uh, about uh, reaching our capacity and all the other uh, health uh, needs of our community potentially being put at risk uh, if we don't uh, follow uh, the advisory that Commissioners Mazzola and Roberts uh, will be issuing. Uh, now we'll take some questions from the press. We're going to use the raised hand function. You should see a hand icon on the in the bottom right corner of your screen. Click on the hand and you'll see a hand next to your name in the attendee list. That's how we know you have raised your hand, we'll unmute, unmute you to ask your question. Please tell us your name, what media outlet you're with after your question has been addressed. 
please click the hand next to your name to turn off the function. If you have any additional questions or follow up, please click it again. With that, we'll take your questions. Please just tell us your name and media outlet. And I believe our first question is from Tom Bosco. Hey, Mayor, Tom Bosco from ABC6 here at Columbus. So explain uh, again this uh, advisory. Is this something that can be enforced? And it, it's not something that can be enforced. How do you expect people to follow it? You know, I'll let uh, Dr. Roberts talk a little bit uh, about that, Tom, uh, but we're calling on people to take personal responsibility and to hold ourselves accountable. We're not asking police to enforce proactively and there's no financial penalty, but there are consequences. If people don't follow these recommendations, more people will be infected, more people will be hospitalized, and more people will die. There are serious consequences associated with not following this advisory. Commissioners uh, Mazzola or uh, Roberts, any additional comments? Thank you, Mayor. Um, I would just add, you're right, this is an advisory and uh, we are hoping that the public has heard us, heard our hospital partners talk about the dire situation our community is in right now and they'll step up, they'll take action, they'll do something now so that we can control the spread of this virus in our community. I think we here in Franklin County have shown that we ask individuals to step up. We ask people to voluntarily make these adjustments. And if we don't see the improvement that we need to see in our cases and our community, we then take another step. So although this is an advisory, and as you said, it is not enforceable, I feel strongly that, at least from the public health perspective, we are willing, if need be, to take further actions that would be enforceable. Commissioner Mazzola, any, any additional comments? You just said, I think, you know, it's, it's certainly our role here in public health to advise our residents and to inform them and provide that guidance. We think that this advisory does that. Uh, we're, we're hopeful and confident that our residents will, will certainly uh, take this advisory and apply it to their everyday life. We think that it includes enough uh, specific information and recommendations to how to best do that. Um, but certainly as Dr. Roberts alluded to, um, should the circumstances continue uh, to move in the wrong direction, we will look at other options uh, to help uh, slow the spread of the virus in our community. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner uh, uh, Mazzola. Uh, our next question, I believe, is from uh, Carrie Ghost. Hey, uh, Carrie Ghost from Columbus Business First. I um, wanted to ask about dining in restaurants. Um, obviously, you are not putting in order it sounds like that to close dine-in but it sounds like that is the practical effect if people follow this advisory can you just talk about the effect on businesses from this advisory what you expect to see out in uh, the community want to invite an opportunity for uh any uh the county commissioners or health commissioners uh would like to respond so carrie um I'll, I'll take a shot at that one. So when, when the governor put on the curfew yesterday, uh, that, that in effect, um, you know, well, you know, that, that I should, I should characterize it that way. What we're saying to folks is, you know, you need, you need to, um, you need, you need to be safe. Every, you need to make sure your family's safe. You need to make sure that you're not doing things that are spreading the virus. Um, restaurants and, uh, and bars are uh, already hurting. Um, this uh, advisory um, is is a suggestion to folks as a, as a way to uh, help the community, help their neighbors, help their families uh, to to stay safe. Um, and and certainly, as a former restaurant owner, uh, I understand the pain and the the, um, the difficulty that restaurants and, and bars have. Have been through this year. Um, 
no question about it. I've spoken to them throughout the course of the year on this issue over and over again. This advisory is uh, certainly not uh, anything that's going to going to be um, uh, helpful, but at the same time, uh, we need to be uh, cognizant of the rest of the, the residents uh, of uh, of our community, and um, you know certainly takeout is is has been a big part of this year's. Um, uh, this year's lexicon folks have uh, restaurants have, have adjusted and they have um, been surviving uh, in large part due to their takeout and carry out business and uh, that will continue uh, I'm sure uh, it always it always will and um, but at the same time you know folks need to understand that uh, you know when when numbers go from a thousand in September to more than 2,000 in October, to 7,200 in uh, November. Uh, that is a very, very troubling trend. And, um, you know, we're headed in a direction that this community can't sustain. And these healthcare systems certainly can't sustain. I think you heard Dr. Thomas uh, talk about where we're headed uh, if these numbers continue to go uh, where they go or where they're headed. Um, and so uh, something needs to be done. And we came here today to, um, to make announcements uh, to back up the governor and, and the announcements he, that he's made this week. Uh, you're going to find in the next uh, day or two that uh, the metropolitan counties all over the state are going to be making uh, similar announcements. And, um, you know, we, we just need to make sure that uh, folks are hearing us loud and clear. That the messaging is a united message, uh, and that and that folks are understanding, especially as we head into the holidays, that that gathering together and that, uh, that doing things that just aren't necessary are what's putting us in this situation, and folks need to think before they act. Uh, they need to wear a mask whenever they leave the house. They need to wash their hands on a regular basis. You know, uh, these are things that need to happen. And, and, you know, so we need, we need to make sure that, that the messaging is getting out. Thank you, President Thanks. O'Grady. Uh, uh, Commissioners uh, Boyce, Brown, or President Hardin, any uh, comments from you all? In response I do to have a question? comment. Um, in addition to what Commissioner O'Grady mentioned about ordering food for takeout, I would suggest you also consider the servers that are preparing that food and tip as though you're eating in because that's incredibly important during this time. It's, it's not um, something that we're used to doing when you take out, but during this time especially, it's really important to make sure you tip the restaurant so that the servers can get something that they're not getting now because we're not eating in. And it's really an important part of their um, living and they're, they're really hurting right now. So I would add that. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Brown. Any additional comments from electeds? I know we have uh, another question from, um, looks like Pete Grevy. Yeah, I just want to follow up about um, indoor dining staying open here um, because it does seem like you guys are discouraging some actions um that maybe the public health community would say are can be done fairly safely like extracurricular extracurricular activities with masks on um, or offices having workers in their facilities with masks on that is now discouraged but at the same time indoor dining is allowed to stay open which we know is a uh you, you know creates environments where the virus can spread because people take their masks off indoors perhaps in a, a bar or a restaurant without ventilation so i'm just wondering if you can talk more about why we didn't get a decision today to close indoor dining and if that is still on the table in the coming weeks well i'll turn to our public health experts uh in uh joe mazzola and, and michika roberts uh for their 
a perspective on that, but I think clearly what we've said today and what we've done before as a community is to offer advice and encouragement, um, you know, whether it was uh, in dealing with mass earlier on, uh, 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 bars and restaurants, uh, and then take an action if uh, that advice and, and counsel is not taken and heeded. Uh, so certainly we will contemplate additional actions uh, in the future if we are not successful uh, in slowing the spread uh, and, and flattening this curve a bit. Uh, this exponential growth is a clear and present danger to the threat, you know, health and safety here in Central Ohio. But uh, Commissioners uh, Roberts or uh, uh, Mazzola? Thank you, Mayor. I'll, I'll take a stab at that question. Uh, clearly, the advisory is encouraging all residents in Franklin County to limit their activities to just the essential functions. Uh, so, yes, you can interpret that to mean that we're asking people if they need food to go to the grocery store or to do pickup or delivery. We're also asking businesses, when possible, to allow their employees to work remotely, when possible. Not every business is able to do that. Um, but those who can, we're asking that they do that now. Um, and we're also encouraging businesses, including restaurants, to think of new creative ways to move as much as their business online or remote as possible, which would include um, takeout and pickup for those restaurants. Um, we have known there's been studies out there that have shown that indoor dining is a risk. And as we go into the winter months, and we know there are less opportunities for outdoor dining, particularly here in Ohio, um, indoor dining can be a risk. And it has nothing to do with the restaurant itself. It has to do with the function that people are doing in those restaurants. You have to take your masks off to eat and drink. Um, from the inspections Columbus Public Health has done, we know that about 95% of our restaurants and our businesses are compliant but it's the 5% that we have to worry about as well that are not compliant um, that can increase the spread of this virus in our community. So the, the advisory is clear. We are encouraging residents to perform only essential functions, um, which would include going to work in school, going to get food, whether it's from a grocery store or a restaurant, going to um, medical appointments or get, seeking healthcare as needed. And this is Joe Mazzola. I, I think, again, I would uh, agree completely with Dr. Roberts. Um, I think what we're trying to do is strike a balance here um, and make sure that, again, that we're giving our residents the information that they need to make better choices uh, as they go about their, their everyday life. And so um, whether that's uh, this deciding whether or not to go out to eat or how they can go about their day with respect to other uh, essential uh, services, um, you know, we want to make sure we're providing that information to best do that in the most, um, in the safest manner. So, um, you know, we're looking forward to continuing to implement um, this guidance and, and share it with our residents. Um, and we will be uh, uh, continuing to reach out to our uh, food service operators and, and other uh, businesses to ensure that they can operate as safely as possible. I think uh, Kerry uh, Ghost has a, a follow-up. Kerry? My apologies, I forgot to hit my hand. <laughs> no, no worries. Uh, Pete, do you have a follow-up? Oh, I didn't mean to click the button either. <laughs> no worries, no worries. Are there any other uh, questions from uh, the press at this point? Mr. Mayor? Do you mind if I actually pose a question to uh, Commissioner my, uh, Roberts? I just got a text from a friend who runs a funeral uh, uh, business, and I just wanted to, I think somebody hit on it earlier, funeral and churches. Uh, could, 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 uh, Commissioner, could you hit on our, our advisor and how, how it talks to uh, funerals and churches or in, um, in, in weddings? Sure. Thank you for that question, Council President Harden. Uh, so uh, the state order for mass gatherings does exempt weddings and funerals from the 10 people or less. Our advisory is discouraging those activities. Again, it's advising them not to occur or to find um, safer ways to occur, i.e. remotely. Thank you. 
You're welcome. Any other uh, questions uh, from the press? Any uh, closing comments from uh, Dr. Roberts, Commissioner uh, uh, Mazzola, any of the county commissioners, council president? If not, uh, appreciate everyone uh, joining us here today. If there are questions, future questions from the press, please feel free to follow up with the communications office and the mayor's office, council, or at the county commissioners, and we'll get you uh, answers to your questions. Uh, thanks for everybody's time this morning. Stay safe.